What's up guys, I'm here with my Guardian Druid Tank Guide for Legion, patch 7.0.3. In this guide I'm going to go over your talents, your spells and abilities that are relevant to tanking, your artifacts, traits and pathing that I recommend, your stat priority, your tank rotation, which is very very similar for single target and AoE, and then demonstration of that on a dummy here, and then just macros and add-ons you can use to help yourself out. Let's go ahead and jump into the talents, and you'll notice not much has changed from the Legion pre-patch. Now, in the first tier, Bristling Fur is going to be your go-to. It's a very nice rage generation cooldown, so it's a mini cooldown in a way, a survivability cooldown. 40 second cooldown, the more damage you take during this period, then the more rage you generate. So just make sure you are taking damage when you use it. Now, if you've got a lot of AoE or sustained kind of cleave going on with many many targets then blood frenzy is very nice it gives you consistent rage generation th via thrash and so every time thrash does damage the dot ticks then it generates two rage for you so as you can imagine the more mobs you're hitting with it the more rage you generate and the better this talent gets brambles is not great it's linked to your bark skin and it just makes you do a little bit more damage but it does not give you any more rage which does not increase your survivability it does reflect a little bit of damage but it's just not as good as the other two. Now level 30, you, it's completely up to you generally. This is just movement, talents. Now control wars is probably best for raids and such, for raid utility if you're concerned with that. It reduces the cooldown of your stampeding roar and increases the radius significantly. So it makes it a one minute cooldown rather than a two minute cooldown. So it can be really, really useful for your raid if you need that, but it is up to you. I'm using Wild Charge right now for like questing and dungeons. Uh, Displacer Beast, generally not recommended because it takes you out of bear form, but if you do want to use it, you can just be careful and make sure you do get back to bear form after you use it. So this one's kind of personal preference for what your raid wants you to use. Level 45, all the infinities. The active abilities they give you are pretty useless, so in general you'll just be using looking at the passives. So Restoration Affinity gives you the most survivability because it gives you a self-heal, a passive self-heal, whereas the others just do stuff that's not that important. Movement speed from Feral Affinity and extra range on your abilities for 5 yards with Balance Affinity. So this is the best for survivability, and if you're not tanking, you could use Swift Mend. It's a decent heal. It's instant. You can use it and get back in bear form. Do not use it when you are tanking, though, because you, you will get absolutely destroyed in that time, possibly. So... I do not recommend using Swiftman unless you're not tanking, but the passive heal is good enough to make this a choice, a better choice than the other two. Now level 60 is all CC, so it's completely up to you, whatever your raid needs or your group needs, or whatever you like. So Mighty Bash is a stun, Mass Entanglement is a an AoE root, and then Typhoon just is a knockback in front of you. So whatever you like here, or whatever your group asks you to use. Level 75, Galactic Guardian is what I recommend. It gives you it makes your Moonfire a Rage Generator when you get this buff, and it also helps you in your AoE with applying Moonfires to things without having to, because it gives you free Moonfires. It's extra damage, extra threats, and it's just really good for Rage Generation as well. And it gives you the most Rage Generation out of the three talents. Incarnation is decent for Burst Rage, Burst Threat Generation, both of those, but it's a really long cooldown, and you don't generate as much Rage overall as you would with Galactic Guardian. It does also make your mangle cleave, so it can help you a little bit with kind of cleave threat, but not really AoE threat. If you have more than three targets, you're going to be missing one of them or more than one with your mangle. Soul of the Forest does not generate as much rage as Galactic Guardian and has no effect on AoE, so it kind of loses out on both things there, so I don't rec really recommend this at all. Generally, Galactic Guardian is what I would recommend for everyone. Now, level 90, Guardian of Elune is your default go to. It increases the duration of your active mitigation spells, your Iron Fur, Mark of Ursul, by 2 seconds, and it increases the healing of your Frenzy region. Now, it only increases one of these, so you get, you get this buff, Guardian of Elune, and then the next time you use one of those three abilities, it will buff that one. So, whichever one you choose, it will buff them, but they're all pretty significant increases to survivability if you use properly, so this is a really, really good talent and can really do good stuff if you're actively tracking it and making good use of it. Now, Survival of the Fittest can be useful if you need the reduced cooldown on your defensive cooldowns to line up with boss mechanics, is probably the best way I could say it. So if things, for example, Bark Skin, by default is one and a half minutes, this would make it one minute. So if there's a mechanic that happens every minute on the minute, 
then this would be really good because then you always have Barkskin up ready for that. Although, of course, with the artifact traits, it's a little bit lower, but just as an example. So if this allows you to use your cooldowns for every boss mechanic that you need, then this becomes really good, but it's not as good consistently as Guardian of Loon for survivability. And Earth Warden is just not really comparable to the other two. It just reduces the damage of auto attacks from the boss of the next one, and it's just not great. So I recommend one of the other two. Now level 100, I recommend Rend and Tear. It gives you survivability. It reduces the damage you take by 6%, essentially, once you get your three stacks of Thrash rolling. And it also increases the damage you do to the targets that have the Thrash debuff. And it's both a survivability talent and a damage increase. Now, Pulverize technically gives you a little bit more survivability, gives you 8% damage reduction, and it consumes two stacks of your Thrash, but it does not increase your damage at all. And so, I recommend Rend and Tear because it's a very, very slight loss of survivability to lose 2% of the damage reduction for 6% extra damage. Plus, using Pulverize takes away two stacks of Thrash, so you have to then reapply extra stacks, and every so often you're kind of losing damage out. And it is fairly important that tanks do some damage, especially in dungeons and such, when there's only five people. Lunar Beam, just not great. It does decent heal over eight seconds. It's a one and a half minute cooldown, does like a little bit of damage too. But compared to the other two, it's just not as good. They're very, very consistent. You can have them up 100% of the time, essentially, after the, the initial ramp up, of course. And so these are just really, really good versus Lunar Beam. So those are your talents. Let's go over your spells and abilities that you use as a Guardian Druid. Now, for damage, you've got Mangle, short cooldown, single target, does more damage to bleeding targets, so things that have your Thrash, and it generates Rage. Now, it generates more Rage if you have a proc of Gore, and it's just when other abilities reset the cooldowns, so you, you can get a free Mangle just from doing other stuff, other offensive abilities, and then when you get that little buff, Mangled then gives you 10 Rage instead of 6. So it just gives you a little extra Rage. You don't have to keep track of it too, too much, but just know that you may get extra Rage from Mangled. Thrash, your AoE dot ability. It thrashes around you, a little radius around you, and it applies a bleed, and it can stack up to 3 times when you're in bear form. So it generates a little Rage as well when you apply it, but the dot itself does not. Then we've got Moonfire, pretty simple, just does damage over time, very, very small amount up front, and then a fair amount of damage over time. Again, if you have the Galactic Guardian procs and the talent, then it actually generates 15 Rage as well, but otherwise, without it, it does not do anything for Rage generation. Then we've got Swipe as our filler, very simple, it's instant, it's free, you can spam it, it does a little AoE damage around you. And then Mole, that's an ability I don't really recommend using a lot, but it costs a little bit of rage, very short cooldown, does small damage, and it's kind of a rage dump, if you will, but not very useful when you're actively tanking. Now, as far as defensives go, we do have Iron Fur and Mark of Ursul, and they're your two kind of active mitigation, your main defensive abilities. They have half a second cooldown, and they cost 45 rage each. And the Iron Fur re increases your armor by 100%. And it does stack, so when you spam it, it doesn't refresh the duration. It actually puts another layer on. So if you want to spam Iron for twice, for example, in a row, then you will have 200% extra armor rather than 100%. Now, if you sp cast Iron Fur, and then two seconds later you cast Iron Fur again, for four seconds you're going to have 200% armor, but then once that first Iron Fur duration drops, you're going to go back down to 100% for the last two seconds or so of the second iron fur that you used. So that's kind of how that works. It's for your physical damage reduction. You can spam it to kind of stack it up. And then we've got Merc of Ursul. And that's just very, very simple. It does not stack with itself. It just reduces the magic damage you take by 30%. And reapplying it will add to the duration. So those are your two main abilities. Just kind of use which one you need to, you know, at what time when, when you're taking certain kinds of damage. Now along with that, we do have Frenzied Regen. And it costs 10 rage. Very, very cheap. It's got a Two charge system with a fairly lengthy cooldown for active, not active mitigation, but kind of self heal. And what it does is it heals you for half of the damage that you took over the last five seconds. Now it does heal you as a hot, but it's a very sh short hot, so it'll go very quickly. Basically, you want to use this after you take a big spike of damage. It's very, very powerful if you use it correctly. As far as cooldowns go, we do have Bark Skin. It's a one and a half minute cooldown. Now, if you have your artifact traits, you will notice that, like I do, so it's a little bit shorter than that. 
It just reduces the damage you take by 20%. Very simple. Short cooldown. Use it when you need to. Now, if you need a big, heavy cooldown, we've got Survival Instincts. It's a four-minute recharge, and it's got two charges, but it's a very, very long cooldown. And it reduces the damage you take by 50% for six seconds. So, really, really powerful defensive cooldown here. And then our Artifact Weapon gave us Rage of the Sleeper. So, it's an extra cooldown we have now. And it's a one and a half minute cooldown, and it essentially reduces the damage you take by 25%, and reflects damage back on the attackers. So it's a kind of a small cooldown, similar to Barkskin, does a little bit more, and with certain talents in the artifact weapon, it'll do even more than Barkskin. But it's a short cooldown, so you use it pretty liberally, but I'll get into that in kind of the rotation section. Uh, as far as utility, we have Stampeding Roar. It does... AoE movement speed for your group if they're close enough to you. We have Interrupt, of course, and Skull Bash. And then we've got Remove Corruption, which I don't really recommend you use because it takes you out of bear form, but if you really need to, you can dispel Curse and Poison. And then we do have Battle Res and Rebirth, and it only costs 10 Rage, so it's really, really nice to be able to use. And you can use that in bear form, I believe. It will not take you out. So those are your spells and abilities. Now let's go ahead and look at your artifact weapon. So... You've got the Claws of Ursoc, and your first ability we've already talked about is Rage of the Sleeper, but in case you skip to the section, it's just a 1.5 minute cooldown, kind of similar to Barkskin, 25% damage reduction, and reflects some damage back. Now, you do want Embrace of the Sleeper, this golden trait up here, pretty much as fast as you can. It's kind of it's really, really important, and it buffs your Rage of the Sleeper, your cooldown, and it makes it so that you deal extra damage as well, and you get 25% increased leech, so it makes it like a better defensive cooldown and also makes it an offensive cooldown as well and then it makes you immune to CC effects. Not as useful in raid but if there are fights that deal with CC in the tanks then this is really really nice. So I go up the right side here you'll notice because there's a lot more defensive things. I got this talent here that increases the healing by your friends regen, the reduction of cooldown on Barkskin. This one's not that useful but I had to use it. I had to grab it and a little damage by Thrash. And the other side has a lot of kind of useless talents, like this Roar of the Crowd thing, it's a movement speed, the critical strike chance of Maul really sucks because Maul you just don't use that often, and then this stamina thing up here is just not that great. So I go up the right here, or I've been going up the right this way, but grab him and grace of the Nightmare as soon as you can, and after that you're going to want to aim for one of the other two golden talents. I, the, I find that Gory Fur is better, it will do more damage reduction, more survivability for you. And it just makes it so that Mangle has a chance to reduce the rage cost of your next Iron Fur or Mark Reversal, so your active mitigation, by half. So for Iron Fur, that means you can spam it more and get a bigger cooldown, and Mark Reversal just allows you to not rage starve as much, or to get it out alongside Iron Fur, things like that. So I find that more universally applicable. Adaptive Fur just gives you a chance that when you take elemental damage, so say like Fire, for example, then you have a chance to reduce all Fire damage that you take, by 10% for 15 seconds. Pretty simple. It's decent, and it's really, really close. You'll notice I could go straight for this Reinforced Fur, which is quite good as well, and then go to that. So if you want to just have two Golden Talons very easily, you can take this. I do like Gory for a little bit more. I think it's got more implications and more power for survivability. That's kind of up to you. And just note that Bear Hug down here, although optional to get to those talents, is really quite good. It does increase the chance to trigger your gore by 5% and gore again is your passive to reset mangle. And it kind of has a nice synergy with gory fur because mangle is tied to this ability. But generally just go with however you want to path, but I do recommend going up to the right first, getting Embrace of the Nightmare, and then kind of skipping back and either going for Adaptive Fur or gory fur. So... That's what I recommend. Definitely don't get Roar of the Crowd or Bestial Fortitude until the very, very last bits, if you can help it. And Mauler as well, try to avoid. These are three talents that you just do not want until you have to, to when you get level 34. But as a quick reminder, you will have all of these talents eventually as the expansion goes on. So those are your artifact talents and pathing choices that you can make. Now, as far as stat priority goes... It's pretty similar. It's basically the exact same as it was in pre-patch. Mastery is going to be your go-to. It increases your survivability by increasing your health and healing that you receive. And it also increases your attack power, which is kind of a nice little side bonus. Now, it was nerfed a while ago in pre-patch, but it's still one of your best survivability stats because it increases the healing you receive. 
And so even though you're taking more damage, you are healed for more, and you also have a bigger health pool, which is very, very nice. Now after that, haste is very important. Haste will reduce the cooldown of your, of course, your auto attack, so you auto attack faster, and it reduces the cooldown of some abilities like Mangle, Thrash, and Frenzied Regeneration, which is really, really good. So you want those to be on a shorter cooldown, of course, so you can use them more for more rage generation for these two, and more healing from Frenzy Regeneration more often. So haste is really good after that. And then versatility for just straight damage reduction. And then critical strike has no interaction with you and is your worst secondary stat. So to recap, you want mastery, then haste, then versatility, and then crit. Alright, now let's go ahead and talk about your tanking rotation. Now, as I mentioned at the start of this video, your tank rotation for single target and multi target is very, very similar. I'll get into the very minor difference that you have there. Now, it's a priority list for damage. And I'll start with how you do your just kind of damage and filler stuff. And so you start, if you have Galactic Guardian procced, then you want to use Moonfall. You want to use it right away because that rage generation is so high. 15 rage is the most you have of any of your abilities. So you want to use that on cooldown as much as possible. So whenever that proc is up, that's your top priority. After that, for single target, Mangle on cooldown. So whether it's up on its own or with the proc. And then Thrash after that. And then just make sure your Moonfire is still ticking. Like, make sure it's still there. If it's Even if you don't have a proc, just make sure you have that dot. And then swipe to kind of fill the dead time. You never really use Maul if you're actively tanking because you're better off using Rage on active mitigation like Iron Fur or Mark of Rissel. And basically I would only recommend using it ever if you're not tanking, just for extra damage. But if you're ever tanking or taking damage, I really recommend not using Maul at all. If you're really so high on Rage that you want to siphon off a little bit, you might as well just use active mitigation to reduce damage you're taking instead. So that's your single target rotation. The only difference with multi-target is that you prioritize Thrash over Mangle. That's it. So you switch those priorities. So it becomes Galactic Guardian Prox on Moonfire. Top priority still. Then Thrash would be your next priority for AoE. And then Mangle. And then you know keep up Moonfire as much as possible on 2-3 to three targets. But even that's not ne completely necessary because you can just proc it with Galactic Guardian anyway. And then swipe to fill. So... Basically the exact same thing, Moonfire proc, Thrash, Mangle, and then Swipe. Just keeping up as many dots as you can. So you just switch Mangle and Thrash. Now, if you're not tanking, if you're not taking damage, right, the other tank just has so much more aggro for some reason, then you can just kind of forego Mangle and you can forego kind of the Moonfire and just go straight Thrash spam and Swipe spam for AoE damage. Because you don't really need the rage to then, you know, reduce damage because you're not tanking. But if you're taking anything, then I do recommend following the priority and still generating as much rage as possible to reduce the damage you take. So those are your kind of that's your damage tank rotation, like what you do to generate rage and kind of as you're doing other stuff. As far as using your active mitigation and cooldowns, it's pretty cut and dry for bears. You use Iron Fur if you're taking physical damage, and you use Mark Reversal if you're taking magic damage. So that does mean you have to do a little bit of research and look at your boss fight, like I hey, what's what's he doing? What is this damage I'm taking, physical, magic, whatever. Again, remember that Iron Fur can stack, so you can spam multiple Iron Furs in a short duration and have a big armor buff. So you can pull Rage if you know a big physical strike is coming, so that you can spam it a couple times, get a huge armor deal off, and you don't even have to pop a cooldown sometimes. You can reduce the damage so significantly. Mark of Ursul doesn't stack, so just use it once, basically, when you need to for magic damage reduction. And that's pretty much how you use your active mitigation. For frenzied regen, for your self heal, just make sure you've taken a big chunk of damage in the last five seconds before you use it, because that will increase how much it heals you. So when you see your health spike down, pop frenzied regen pretty soon after if you can. It's very cheap, so it generally won't screw you over on using active mitigation, but in case it does, just make sure you pick which one is more important at the time, damage reduction versus heals. But it's good to have a tracker if you can find one or use one, just to know exactly how much you're going to heal with Frenzy Regeneration. As far as defensive cooldowns go, you have a couple now. We've got Barkskin, 20% reduction is very small. Use it kind of liberally if you ever just need a small cooldown. You've got a now a kind of medium small cooldown in Rage of the Sleeper. It's got the same base cooldown as Barkskin, although it'll be a bit longer thanks to the artifact traits that reduce Barkskin's cooldown. And once you get your Embrace of the Nightmare, 
uh, talent tier, then it actually makes it a better, an even better cooldown for you. It makes you do more damage, and it actually gives you extra leech as well. So it makes it a kind of small, medium cooldown, and this is what I would use fairly liberally as well as Barkskin. And then finally you've got your Survival Instincts as your big, huge 50% damage reduction cooldown, like holy crap, I'm about to take a huge hit. Let's use Survival Instincts. So those are your defensive cooldowns. Now you've got a kind of mini defensive cooldown. It's not technically a defensive cooldown, but in Bristling Fur, 40 second cooldown. Just use it when you're going to take a lot of damage. It generates a crap ton of rage for you, allowing you to spam your active mitigation more. So that's it's pretty simple. You just make sure you are tanking and taking a lots of damage. Not even lots of damage, just make sure you're taking damage so you don't waste it. But it's kind of like a mini cooldown. It lets you do more active mitigation. So that's your tanking rotation, both for just kind of what you do to do damage and fill, and then how you use your defensives. Now I'll go ahead and show you guys on this dummy here. Do note that this thing hits like a truck, it's raid level, and I just hit 110. I don't have all my traits and such, and I don't have a healer, and self-sustain from bears is not terrible, but it's definitely not like a warrior's right now with ignore pain or blood decay or anything like that. So I'll just show you guys the rotation. As far as opening, I probably bristling for if you're tanking first. If you're not tanking first, don't use it right away, but just to help you get more rage at the start. And I will be chaining cooldowns a lot. You won't be doing that, obviously, in most fights, so please don't. <laughs> I just need to survive against this guy without a healer. So I'll start here. I'll charge in bristling fur and then mangle, and then go from there. So I'll charge bristling fur and mangle, thrash. I'll pop iron fur, get my dot up. I'll probably pop a heal here and a trinket, and then mangles up and then thrashes up. Iron Fur when it's up, when I have enough Rage. Now maybe I'll Rage of the Sleeper here with Barkskin. Mangle. Thrash. And I'm not getting any procs, I'm just swiping. Heal, Survival Instincts. Pop Iron Fur when I can. I got a proc for Moonfire. And then proc for Mangle. And then I'll probably back out here, but you know, I have enough Rage to use. Iron Fur and so on. Now there I just use Iron Fur because it's mostly physical damage. But of course if you're using taking magic damage, then you can use... Mark of Earth Soul. So that's pretty much it. It's a very simple rotation. It's just all about managing your rage and using your active mitigation at appropriate times. As far as macros and add-ons go, I do not use any macros right now because I don't find anything that's worthwhile in terms of keeping up like, or macroing two spells together or anything. But add-ons, I am using weak ores to track a lot of stuff you probably saw in that short demonstration there. I'm currently tracking the cooldown of Bristling Fur, Rage of the Sleeper, and Frenzy Regeneration, along with stacks for Frenzy Regeneration, just so I know exactly how much I have, how much time I have left, and how many stacks I have, if any. And then I've got an indicator for Galactic Guardian, so when this shows up, this white thing, then I'm like, oh, I've got a proc of Moonfire, I'll use Moonfire. You can use other stuff, of course, you could track your Survival Instincts, your Bark Skin, you could do Rage Trackers, you can do all sorts of stuff with Weak Ores, it's very, very cool. And all of these are on my paste bin, which I will link in the description below. If you want to check those out, you can copy and paste those strings in, and you can use them for yourself. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it helped you out. If you liked it, please hit it with a like. And if you want to see what I'm putting out, and I will be putting out more videos like this in the future, feel free to subscribe to the channel so you can see when I post new videos. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.